Hey everybody, happy Black Friday. So right now I'm sitting here on my iPad. Uh, I've got an iPad mini that I actually purchased one year ago today, Black Friday of 2017. The whole reason that I actually purchased the iPad mini was for one thing and one thing only, to be able to use Ground Station Pro. So I just pulled up Ground Station Pro and I'm looking at a quick little flight path area. So Ground Station Pro is a DJI product, and it is an iPad-only product. So if you want to fly this with an Android smartphone or Android tablet, you can't. If you want to use an iPhone, you can't. You can only use an iPad with Ground Station Pro currently. So that's why last year I picked up my iPad mini on Black Friday, because huge discount on it last year, so that was fantastic. And it gave me the opportunity to try out Ground Station Pro for doing 3D modeling and mapping with my DJI Mavic. I now have the Mavic 2 Pro as well, and that has really spurred me to check out Ground Station Pro again. So months and months ago, I actually did some flights and posted some items on Arizona Drone, about flying with Ground Station Pro. And there are actually a couple of things that really bothered me that didn't work very well on Ground Station Pro for doing my modeling. So I kind of dropped it and started using Map Pilot by Maps Made Easy and um, also using Litchi a lot more for my automated flight. But with the changes that have recently come out in the new Ground Station Pro, I actually think that we've got some possibilities now to create some higher end models. So we're gonna try that out today. And before we go any further, I just wanna let you know the audio quality is a little different on this video today. I'm actually using my Apple AirPods while I'm doing this screen recording. The reason why I'm using the Apple AirPods is quite simple. Right now, I'm going to be connecting up my drone controller to the iPad mini. When I do that, the uh, lightning cable is going to be plugged into the iPad mini, so I can't plug in a uh, lav mic here. So instead, I'm using the Bluetooth AirPods to do the audio recording of this. Now, before we go any further as well, we're going to step back from this particular layout, and we're gonna create a completely new one on Ground Station Pro so you can see how the layout is created. So I'm just hitting the back arrow key here. And what I'm gonna do, so that was mission number nine, I had tested that out before. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new mission and we're gonna do a 3D map area. Now I've got two options here. I can tap out the area so I can pre-plan my flight. Or when I get to the location where I'm going to be doing my 3D model, I could actually use the drone to mark out the edges, which is really great. If you're going somewhere that doesn't have any reference points when you're laying out your 3D map area, let's say you're going to a new development that right now is all dirt and there's no houses on it, you might not have any frame of reference as to where you should be flying. In those cases, you can mark out your areas using the aircraft, which is just awesome. But we're gonna do tap here and right now we're seeing the map area that we're gonna be working on. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap and it gives me a block. And what I can do is click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag this over here. We're just gonna make a model of some of the rock formations in the granite dells. We're gonna keep this a very small, very manageable model. So there we go, that's the layout that I want to use. And now we can talk about what's going on with Ground Station Pro on the right hand side. If you're new to Ground Station Pro, up on the top bar, when we connect up our drone, we're going to have some different things. So upper left corner says not connected. The mode says not applicable. The next symbol uh, moving right is satellite positioning. So we don't have satellite positioning because we're not connected to the drone yet. Next one is my controller and its signal strength. Once again, not connected to the drone yet. Next item is no camera. Once we fire up the drone, we will have camera information and then we will have battery information for the drone. Finally, we have the iPads 
power level right now at 81%. And then over to the right, we've got some settings that we can get into. And finally, we can fly our mission with that plane symbol. Now, let's take a look at the right-hand column. So I've laid out my flight area. And as you can see, so we've got paths going back and forth. Now, this is one of the things that I did not like with Ground Station Pro from the get-go. Is Ground Station Pro doesn't allow you to do a full grid. So you can't do a full crosshatch pattern. You can do this uh, parallel paths. But for getting all angles and edges for a 3D model, this is a little inconvenient. I do have a way to get around that, though, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So looking over on the right-hand side, this is mission number 10. I could relabel that, and I probably will later. It's telling me I've got 12 lines for my main path that we're going to fly 4,592 feet, and that we're going to cover about five acres. Now, there's more to that screen, but first we're going to go down under the basics. So we've got our camera model that we can select. And in the camera model, they have now added the Mavic 2 Pro camera. So we will add that after. We've got several ways to shoot now. So our shooting angle can be parallel to the main path, and you're gonna miss a lot of data that way. Even doing it perpendicular to the main path, one of the things that I really complained about when it came to Ground Station Pro was the fact that it's always shooting in one direction. So if we start this project with perpendicular to the main path, what's going to happen is the drone is going to fly from south to north. So if you see the little S symbol there, that's my starting point. It's going to fly from south to north. It's going to move over, and then it's going to fly backwards from north to south, keeping the camera facing north the entire time. That means that the faces on the north side of these rocks we're never going to capture very well. So that was something that really bothered and disappointed me with Ground Station Pro. But now that we have the new version of Ground Station Pro, we have an opportunity for something called Course Aligned. So now the drone will make its 180 degree turns as it works along these parallel paths. So that means it'll be photographing north and photographing south on the next pass. So hopefully this is going to generate better 3D area models for us. The next item, capture at equal distance interval. So we could have it hover and capture, which will take us the longest, but hopefully get us the best looking model. We can capture at equal time intervals, and you can set how many seconds apart you want the photos, or you can capture at equal distance intervals. For this test, we're gonna go with equal distance intervals. The next item is inside mode or scan mode for your flight course. I'm going to stick with inside mode because I don't want to go way out overlapping areas outside of my defined flight area. So I'm going to go with inside mode. Then we have the speed, which is set for us based on the mission. And we have our shutter interval. Then we have our altitude and our resolution. Now, in the case of this model, I'm going to raise the altitude a little bit. The higher up you go, the shorter the mission is. But the higher up you go, the less detail you might get. But I just want to, let's just put this at 214 feet sounds really good to me. And it's telling me my resolution is going to be 2 centimeters per pixel. Okay. Now, below that, we have our Latin lunge. We're not going to do anything with this right now. The next tab that I'm going to hit is the advanced button because we also can define our overlap. The more overlap we have, uh, the more accurate that our model is going to be, the better representation we're going to create in that 3D model. So I'm going to push that up to 80% and for the front overlap, and I'm going to push that up to 80% for the side overlap as well. Now you'll notice that we've got some more path lines here because we're having to make more passes now. The next item that we have is also course angle. So we can actually change the course angle, watch those little green lines switch around. And for now, I did like the course angle of 90%, so I, or 90 degrees, excuse me. So I'm going to put that back there. There we go. So I just tap that back into 90. 
We can also change our margins and we can change the gimbal pitch. So right now the gimbal is gonna be shooting straight down. Now, shooting straight down means that we're gonna lose some of our faces. Now, if you take a look at PIX4D's capture app, you'll notice that PIX4D on its flights always default sets things to 70 degrees, negative 70 instead of negative 90. So right now for this particular model, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot straight down. So we're not going to change the pitch angle, but after we look at our model, we might decide that we want to. Our final item here is we also have, what is the end of mission action? We can return to home, we can hover it, or we could land it where it finishes. I'm gonna go with return to home. And for return to home, I'm actually going to make sure that it's a little higher as well. Remember we set the mission at uh, 200 and something feet. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna go back up to basic. And so we're flying at 214 feet is where we're gonna fly the mission. And the return to home is gonna be at 217 feet. And I'm comfortable with that because I know the terrain around here, so I'm not super, super concerned. Now, let's take a look at one more thing. I'm going back to basic, but up below mission 10, you'll notice where it says 4.49 acres that there's three dots here. I can swipe to the left. And so the next piece of information that Ground Station Pro gives me is that this flight should take four minutes and 43 seconds. It should take one battery. It's going to take 93 photos for me. So in total, this mission is pretty much ready to go. I am going to pop in here and actually put a new name for the mission for when I save it. So let's call this GS Pro. Whoops, autocorrect. You gotta be kidding me. Gas Pro, that's funny. So here we go, GS Pro space. Mavic 2. All right, so that's looking good to me. And now that I've got this initial modeling flight laid out, upper left corner below the arrow is the save your mission. So now if I arrow back, there we go, Ground Station Pro Mavic 2. So that mission is ready to go. As I said before, I'm not satisfied that I can't do a full grid pattern but there is a way to deal with that if you're quick and you're doing a small model. So how can I deal with that? I'm going to make a copy of the same exact path. So there it is, copy of Ground Station Pro. And now I'm going to edit that one. For my editing, I'm going to do a very, very simple thing. I am going to change my flight path. So under course angle, under advanced, I am going to dial this back to zero. So this one combined with the other one is going to give me a full grid pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on that. So now if I go look back at my missions, let's see that one really quick. All right, so that is the copy. And then the other one, same exact footprint is going to be flown again, but we have actually changed the directions between the two. So combining these two together is going to get us our grid pattern. Finally, I wanna take a look at the edit again. So this one says that it's four minutes and 39 seconds. The other, minute, the other one was four minutes and some odd seconds as well. So this entire thing should be doable on one battery. So the next step is for us to actually go and fly this. All right, everyone, so I did my first test. I actually flew the first half of this mission with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I wanted to test it out before we committed to uh, putting this part on video. So part one, GS Pro Mavic 2 has been completed, and now I'm going to click on copy of Ground Station Pro Mavic 2. And as you can see, the uh, flight pattern has changed. So I could go in here to edit if I need to. So I'm actually gonna go into that edit and a different camera is connected. So let's see, yes, it automatically detected the Mavic 2 Pro. So fantastic, we are ready to go. I've already done all of my flight checks and what we're looking at now 
Let's look at that top screen. We're flying a Mavic 2 Pro on the left-hand side. We're in GPS mode. We have 14 satellites. We have full signal between the controller and the drone. We have full signal for the video feedback from the Mavic 2 Pro camera. I've got 68% battery left on the Mavic 2, and I've got 71% battery on my iPad, so we are good to go. I'm going to step away from the drone, and on the right-hand side, I've got a little plane symbol. I go ahead and tap that plane symbol. It's going to ask me, so I am in a uh, Class D airspace. I do have permission to fly. I did the L-A-A-N-C before um, taking off, so I'm going to unlock that. And we've got the one battery at 67%. The camera is good. The end of the mission activity is to return to home, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start to fly. And the drone is firing itself up. And there goes the drone, so it's taking off. And down on the lower left-hand side, you can see the altitude is going up right now because we're going to go a little over 200 feet. So the drone is getting itself set up. This is fully autonomous flight. And do excuse the wind noise. I am outside, and one of the realities of being outside is wind happens, especially in the desert southwest. So now we're actually seeing the drone fly to its starting point. So I did the north to south and south to north before. Now we're doing the east to west and west to east, and it's collecting up the images. So down on the lower left-hand side for this part of the new mission, right now it tells me I have zero photos, and there it goes, it fired the first photo. So we had set this to equal distance before, and remember that we also had some pretty good overlap. So this should start looking really good on the modeling software that we're going to test it on after. So initial impressions here. So far, Ground Station Pro is doing a good job with the Mavic 2 Pro. And only our final results will tell us how it really did. So we've set up two missions so that we could make that grid pattern instead of just the parallel lines patterns. You'll also notice that the camera is facing in the same direction as the drone's flight. Like I said, on the previous version of Ground Station Pro for doing 3D map areas, that was not an available item. So that meant that you were always shooting in one direction and potentially failing to capture some really important information by shooting in other directions as well. Especially if you're trying to do a 3D model you want as much information, as much data as possible. So looking at the lower left side again, we're up to 20 photos. And we can also pop up from the lower right side, pop up our camera. So looking up at the top bar right below it, I set everything to auto for doing this 3D model. So we've got auto ISO, auto, uh, auto shutter. So right now the shutter's at 1 1 20th of a second. And now with the new Mavic 2 Pro camera, we do have control over aperture. So the aperture here is f4.5. So this is keeping everything lit properly. And I set the white balance to sunny. And we're using the SD card. So we're not using the onboard, uh, the onboard storage. Right now we're at 57% battery on the drone. And it's 69% battery on the iPad. Now, at any point along this mission, we could, in fact, hit the pause button, manually fly the drone back, and swap out batteries if we needed to swap out batteries. Oh, and by the way, we are doing autofocus as well. So I'm letting Ground Station Pro control the entire flight and the image capture, and we'll see how this 3D model comes out of it. I'm going to switch back to my actual flight pattern mode now, and just keep my eyes on the skies here. So the drone's not going very far at all on me for this one. It's very, very close. We kept this to a very narrow area because we just wanted to uh, see, you know, what we could produce with this. So the first phase of this whole tutorial, we set up our flight um, without having to be connected to the drone. The second part was we actually brought the drone out here and we're flying the two missions that we created for the drone for this 3D model. The third and final part of this tutorial is going to be actually seeing how 
the model gets assembled by a couple of cloud-based programs and by a couple of standalone desktop programs that I have on my iMac. Let me tell you, by the way, the iMac, the 21 inch with eight uh, gigs of RAM is way underpowered for doing modeling. So you're definitely going to want something with a little more um, power to it. And I'm actually considering building a um, Windows mapping only machine just because it's very clear to me you need some horsepower when you start doing some of these larger models. But since we're doing this model for fun, we can work around the amount of time it takes to process. So the biggest part is just the processing time afterward. Now, as you can see on the screen, we still got our little blue arrow drone doing its thing. It's still taking its photos. We're up to 81 shots on this particular mission. But don't forget, we've got the previous mission that you didn't get to see because I wanted to test it out. If mistakes are going to be made, check it out beforehand before you record it because then I'll just bore you to tears as I try to figure out what did I do wrong. So overall, I really do like the interface of Ground Station Pro. And hopefully with the minor changes that they've made to where I can shoot along my flight paths, this product will be improving. One of the other things that I really do like about Ground Station Pro is the fact that it also has waypoint missions. So that's something that I love about Litchi. And basically Ground Station Pro is putting together parts of two applications that I really like. I really like Map Pilot by Maps Made Easy, and that does great 3D grids. And then I really like Litchi for that pre-programmed flight and um, being able to pre-program your flight beforehand when you're not even out in the field. You can actually set up your waypoints and, for waypoint missions and actions. And then when you get to your actual shooting location, you can just get right to work. So. Ground Station Pro is kind of a combination of two of my favorite applications. And earlier in 2018, I came to the conclusion that it didn't do a good job at either. So each of those did a better job on their own. But hopefully with these couple of minor changes that DJI has made with this product, maybe Ground Station Pro can actually be my all-in-one 3D modeling and um, waypoint mission application. We're just going to have to see. But remember, for those of you who um, aren't iPad owners, this is an iPad only application, which I find very sad for, um, for DJI drone pilots, because I think it'd be great to be able to use my iPhone on this as well. All right, it's coming in for a landing. So I'm going to take over uh, control now on the final final landing spot and then we'll bring all this back in offload our images and start building a 3d model and there we go the drone is down all right let's pop out of these applications and we'll get back to work. All right, so I'm back inside and at the computer and with my regular microphone now. Apologies for the lower quality audio earlier in this in this video, but um, you know, working outside, you've got to you've got to set up some way that's reliable, and the uh, AirPods are pretty reliable when I'm recording and flying at the same time. So what we're looking at here right now, I've got the model up in. Photo scan. So this model was generated with our two Ground Station Pro flights, and in total, 219 images went into creating this particular 3D model. So looking at this, Ground Station Pro did a pretty nice job. I'm zooming in. So I just tilted the 3D map a little bit. You'll see that our trees are melting and not filled in, and that's also because of where I was flying it. So my cutoff point was right along here where I'm dragging dragging my cursor along to show you. So that was about my actual cutoff where I was having the drone fly to. The same thing can be noted down at the bottom edge of this map too. But looking in the center area, I've got to say that this came out fairly nice. And we've got some good detail as well. Looking into the canyons and getting a look at the rock formations, you can really see 
where the canyon areas start and end so you can get an idea of water flow during monsoon season. Yeah, bottom line, Ground Station Pro did a pretty good job. Now, beyond just looking at this on photo scan, so I'm just twisting that around to take a look at the rocks again. So not bad. The area that I really wanted to capture has come out fairly well. I uh, also did this, let's pull up Google, did this on drone deploy as well. So looking on drone deploy, we've got a pretty decent model again. So I'm liking the look of this. The uh, textures look really good. The rock formations look pretty realistic. We still have these melted trees because it's not going to be perfect. And um, we didn't do the 90% overlap, but still this is looking like a nice model. So I'm gonna say off the bat that the new version of Ground Station Pro is definitely delivering a little more to me. Next time around, I might wanna redo this model with that uh, 70 degree tilt instead of the 90 degree tilt, just to see if it does a better job on the cliff faces and maybe even on the trees as well. So finally, I did run this through Pix4D as well, and I'm going to quit photo scan here. And Pix4D, I ran into a problem. So I want to share this with you, and we're going to bring this up in the next session because I'm going to do a part two and potentially a part three on this testing with Ground Station Pro. So I just want you to take a look at this really fast. I'm just opening up Pix4D really quick. This is Pix4D model, so not Pix4D mapper. The problem I ran into that I want to show you, this is the Pix4D model interface, and all these little red dots are supposed to be my cameras. So this is where Pix4D said things were when I shot this. Unfortunately, the model was actually created up here at Canyon View Drive. So the model was taking place in this area that I'm bringing my mouse around right now. So where I am taking the mouse around here, this is where the model was actually shot. So why are we over a mile away in the Pix4D model program is completely and totally beyond me. Just as a double check, I actually went in to my flight logs to make sure that everything looked right and the GPS coordinates were right, and they were. I just pulled up air data real quick just to show you. So this is the area where I flew. This is the area where the images were taken. And this area is a very good distance away from where Pix4D was showing my cameras. So. In the next episode of this Ground Station Pro and Mavic 2 Pro testing, we're going to take a closer look at what the heck's going on, why did Pix4D do that, and the one positive here, PhotoScan putting together the model did a good job, Drone Deploy putting the model together did a good job, and looking at my flight logs, my flight logs are right on, so they are where they're supposed to be, so the flight logs aren't showing any discrepancies on location. The only thing that is showing discrepancies on location is the PIX4D model. So in the next video, we'll quickly go over the, um, the mapping programs and um, where they did good and where they did bad. And fortunately, the Ground Station Pro application looks like it's doing a good job. By the way, one other thing to note that I'll be bringing up in the next one Ground Station Pro now has flight logs. Hooray. The flight logs do not automatically sync. I know they're supposed to auto-sync, but they're not auto-syncing. This is just my experience, and maybe other GS Pro users are not having that problem, but we'll talk about that too in the next episode. And we'll talk about how to work around it and get your logs loaded so that you can see them um, on something like air data so i really like seeing this on air data because it tells me this was my first flight and it was um, seven minutes and 52 seconds in total and then the second flight was seven minutes and 24 seconds in total and these came together to produce that 3d model that we just presented well sorry if this one went a little too long and sorry about the differences in audio quality we'll continue working that out for work in the field versus work in the office Thanks for joining me, and I hope that this demo of Ground Station Pro has encouraged you to maybe try it out again if you do have an iPad 
and you're looking for other tools to use to help you with your 3D modeling.